you guys i tried to film this outside in my garden i tried to film it in my greenhouse i've been wandering around the property trying to find a place to film this in the actual garden and it's not working the lighting is hideous and it's noisy and there's wind and birds and cars going past so we're just gonna film it in here and just imagine that there's a pretty garden behind me so recently I put out a call for gardening related questions and thank you to everybody who submitted questions. I have filmed a gardening Q&A before which hopefully you'll find helpful and I will link that over here. But today I'm going to jump into the new questions. Room for a Pony 1 asked, deciding one seedling per pot or multiple criteria and do I reuse the medium after pricking out my seedlings? So as far as how many I put into each pot, I prick out one per cell. So I sow my seeds in trays. I've shown pricking out in a vlog before. When I prick them out, I'll just prick out one per cell of six. So I have little punnets that have six cells in and I'll just put one in each of those because I know that that plant has already started to grow and it's viable. If I'm sowing seeds directly into those little punnets, which I do with larger seeds, then I will sometimes put two in. And sometimes when I'm planting out later, I can separate those two and have two separate plants, but sometimes only one makes it, or sometimes they're too entangled, but then I'll either break off one, like just cut it off like above the soil and let the other thrive, or I'll just plant it out with two together, depending on what the plant is. So I guess the criteria is if I am sowing seed that I know is viable and is a larger seed, I'll just do one per cell in the punnet. Sometimes I'll do two per cell, but if I'm pricking out seedlings, I just put one per cell. As far as reusing the medium after I've pricked out seedlings, no, I don't. And also I don't reuse it if I have any leftover from last year. I had to toss some this year that was leftover from last year, but the nutrients dissipate and it's you want to use fresh seed raising mix so if i've used seed raising mix to raise some seeds and they've all come up or some of them have come up and i've pricked them out i will go and toss that seed raising mix because some of the nutrients have been used up and the balance of nutrients will have changed so definitely use fresh each time for the best results ms Midchasta. I don't know how to say that but that's how I'm saying it asked what is the seed raising mix you use also what is the mix you're putting the plants in seed raising mix I use is just the Dalton's one I think it's the least expensive I'll put a picture on the screen showing the one I buy I just get it from Bunnings and that is what I use and then the potting mix that I pot the seedlings into is the Dalton's potting mix again also from Bunnings I will link everything down below as well Jess asked, what do you use to plant your seeds in? Do you use seed raising mix or just plain potting mix or dirt? Is it worth spending extra on the specialized seed raising mix? Definitely worth spending more for the seed raising mix. You're not going to use a lot, but you want to use the right thing to start them off. Seed raising mix is formulated with the right nutrients for your seeds and they don't need a lot of nutrition initially. So you don't want to put them in too rich of a soil. It's also made to drain correctly. If your seeds are staying too damp, they're going to get damping off, which is a fungal infection. It's going to kill your seeds. It's going to kill your baby seedlings. They're just going to rot. So you want them to be able to drain correctly as well. And seed raising mix is definitely worth it. A little goes a long way because your seeds are little and you're not going to need much so it's, it is worth the extra expense for larger seeds like lupins and things like pumpkins and cucumbers even tomatoes i just sow them straight into the punnets into potting mix and that's fine sarah may asked have you ever started a lemon tree from seed i planted three seeds one survived but it will grow two leaves and one will fall off i planted it three years ago and still only one leaf at four inches tall I've never grown a lemon tree from seed and I believe that they don't come true from seed always so you're better off just buying a plant. If it's been four years and there's still only one leaf I think that plant has taught you that it's not going to do well so you're probably better off just ditching it and buying yourself a little lemon plant. Abby asked how long does it take for you to plant all your seeds that you buy in a day? So I buy, I don't buy all of my seeds in a day. I will do like two or three little orders of seeds during the winter so that it's not just like springs here, buy all the seeds, like one big expense. So I spread my seed buying 
over a few months and then I'll divide them into what needs to be sown when. Some seeds can be sown earlier than others, some need to be sown directly into the garden and not into seed raising mix or into pots and I'll divide it up. So the earliest seeds need to be sown in whatever month and I'll bundle them together. So when I do go out to sow them I'll just do them all in one go and it really doesn't take long. I've shown it in a vlog I think. You literally take a container, put some seed raising mix in, do a light scattering of seeds and then do a light covering of seed raising mix, water it and you're done. And it will take pretty much as long as it's taken me to tell you that to do it. It's not going to take long at all. Pricking out however takes hours so don't over sow. I did that last year. I had linaria seeds and they are super super fine and I was like I'll just sow a few and then I pricked out over 700 seedlings and then threw the rest away because like I was done. So yeah be sure that you're not sowing too many. She did however ask how long does it take for you to plant all your seeds that you buy in a day. So once the seedlings are bigger I go out there I put a podcast on and I prick them out and that can take hours but it's very soothing relaxing work so I don't mind. And then when it comes to actually planting out into the garden, I'll do that in drips and drabs and that can also take hours. Last year I planted out over 1500 seedlings and it was not all done in one day, but it did take a lot of time to do that. It was worth it though because a lot of them have come back this year or self-seeded and made more plants and my garden's beginning to become established, in areas anyway. So if time is a factor for you, sow fewer seeds you'll have less to prick out and you'll have less to plant out and if it wasn't enough this year then try more next year or try another batch later in the season. You don't just get one shot, it's not like sow your seeds in spring, plant them out and you're done. I could go out and start seeds now and just have a fresh batch so you know just experiment and see what works for you. Lisa asks how do you decide what to plant where? We recently moved and I would like to move some plants and get rid of others. I have some ideas of what I would like but I have a whole yard and I'm not sure where to start. Okay so that to me is almost two different questions. In terms of where to start when you have a brand new garden or an area that you're developing, start next to something. So in my garden we have a deck in front of the guest house and I started there. I wanted to create beds around the deck. I wanted some flow and some curves and so that is the first bed that I kind of designed. And then I had a little bit next to the greenhouse so I popped something in there. We already had an existing cage out there which used to be a chicken run which I decided to leave and make my berry cage. So I thought I'll grow my blueberries and strawberries and things in there and then the birds can't get to them. So the cage was another starting place. I made a shade bed curving to the right of that. I put raised beds up against it. So pick a starting point, pick a tree or a deck or a corner of the house or a fence. Maybe decide where you want a bench to be and then just kind of spread out around from that. This is not professional advice. Professionals would be like survey the whole site, get your soil tested, make a plan, put your hard landscaping in and then start your planting absolutely last. But I'm not doing my garden all in one go. I'm doing it but 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 I'm kind of developing and spreading as I go. So there you go. That's my advice if you want to do it but by but and not have one overall plan that you kind of fulfilling is do it adjacent to something or opposite something. Maybe look out your kitchen window and go, what is my view? Create a focal point, create a bed there or put a seat there or a fountain or something. And then you can kind of flow from there. If you have trees on your property like I do, you can create big flowing beds around your trees, which will then create grass paths between the beds, which is my ultimate plan. We'll see, we'll, we'll get there eventually. I hope that answered that question. The other question in terms of what to plant where. Obviously you want to take into account things like shade or sun, like how much sun does a particular spot get because some plants are going to be happier in shade and some are going to be happier in sun. Shade planting can be challenging but that's actually my favorite because now that I'm familiar with which plants like the shade I just find that quite fun. It's almost easier to create when you have limits than it is when you can just pick anything. Also decide if you want that area to look good all year round or if you just want summer color or if you really want something in the spring to reward you for getting through the winter. 
I very much want to put in evergreen shrubs and perennials and things that don't disappear in the winter because we don't get a blanket of snow and I still look out my window in winter and I still want to see nice things. So that will dictate what kind of plants I'm going to put in. I want it to be evergreen. The position will dictate, like we tried putting an Acer kind of next to our driveway. I knew it was a risk because the wind barrels up our driveway and the Acer died. So. I know that they don't like wind and I should have just taken that into account and not even tried to put one there because it didn't end well. So that's the kind of thing you need to look for. How much sun does it get? How dry is that corner? If there's a corner that's under the eaves, it's not gonna get a lot of rain. So you want to put something that can tolerate some drought. How much wind does it get? Things like that. Also, what kind of traffic is there? If it's planting alongside a path you don't want to put things like roses they're going to scratch you as you go by so put something that maybe releases a scent as you brush past so i guess my advice would be decide what you want from each particular area and then look for plants that fulfill those criteria if you go on the royal horticultural website you can narrow down your search in so many different ways so you can decide i want perennials i want evergreen perennials i want them to be shorter than one and a half meters i want them to have some color in spring I want them to flower whatever you want you can take out all of those attributes and it will filter and show you exactly which plants are left that fit your criteria also some plants are going to do better in your area than others and some for no reason at all will just thrive or die there's no rhyme or reason and you just kind of have to try and taste different things and that is one of the reasons that I grow from seed because it's so much cheaper to experiment and if things don't work out I haven't spent a lot of money on plants. I know that the soil in our area is acidic so I'm going to plant things like rhododendrons, azaleas, blueberries like that. Plants that enjoy acid soil are going to thrive here but if I'm trying to plant plants that enjoy alkaline soil they're going to struggle also we don't get cold enough here I would love to grow peonies I love peonies but we don't get cold enough in our area in winter for peonies to bloom well so I'm just not even going to try and put them in another tip is to look at what thrives in your neighbor's garden so have a little walk around your neighborhood and see which plants are growing well in other people's gardens because they will probably grow well in yours Take into account the height of plants, take into account the width, and you can narrow down your search like that on the RHS website, as I mentioned, because you don't want to be putting in a tree that looks cute now, but is going to be eight and a half meters tall down the line. Like, that's maybe going to crowd the space. So if you're looking at the ultimate height and width of plants, when you're planting them out, give them the room they need and take into account the space that you have. There's so much to take into account when buying plants, but it's not as complicated as it sounds. Maybe just start with some smaller plants, pop them in. You can always move things, it's not final. If you put a pin stem in, in a particular spot and it does well and it gets really big and it gets wide and you're like, actually it's a bit bossy in that area, I want a lower border there, dig it up and move it to somewhere else. You can always change your garden. It's not set in stone once you've planted out your plants. Also think about how much work you want. Do you want to plant something that needs a lot of pruning and needs to be cut back hard every autumn or whatever? Or do you want plants that you can just kind of ignore and they see to themselves? Or do you want flowers that are self-cleaning or that you have to go out and deadhead? Things like that. Take into account how much work the plants are going to be before you choose them as well. Okay, I know that sounded like so many things to consider and... I hope it doesn't feel overwhelming that you're like, oh wow, I've got to like think of so many things before I even pick a plant. These are just a few things to consider, but really don't let it stop you from just experimenting. Just try a few things. If you like it and it works, put more of that in your garden. If it doesn't work out, if they die, or if you don't like how they are, pull them out. You are the boss of your garden. Ron asks, how do you compare the soils between South Africa, England, and New Zealand? I know New Zealand has beautiful volcanic soil. This is kind of a difficult question for me to answer for two reasons. First of all, I didn't really garden in South Africa, and the two houses we lived in in South Africa, like after I got married, were both new builds, so the topsoil was not brilliant, and we didn't like have topsoil brought in or anything because I wasn't really into gardening. And then in England, most of the time we didn't have a garden we were in terrace houses i wasn't really into gardening so well there either 
And then New Zealand, obviously, I'm like into gardening now. But the second reason that question is difficult to answer is because the soil varies a lot from area to area. So where I live, we have beautiful, rich volcanic soil. It is amazing. In fact, my friend was complaining because she wants to make a fairy garden and she's got a book recommending all these plants that stay small and they look miniature and they suit fairy gardens and she's like nothing stays small the soil here is so amazing the plants are just taking off and getting big and bold and don't suit her fairy garden so we we are blessed with wonderful soil here where i live in south taranaki but in different areas of the country the soil differs there are clay soils and there are chalky soils and there are sandy soils and it's it varies from area to area i just got really lucky and that is something that if we ever move away from this area i will look into what is the soil like where we're thinking of moving to janae asked how did you get started why did you choose gardening as one of your hobbies i'm wanting to start gardening but i'm not sure where to start i got started just because it's something that's always interested me and i've always wanted to do and also because I wanted lots of flowers and things to take photos of. I'm into macro photography. I love taking pictures of flowers and I've never had any in my garden. And that is one of the main reasons I started a garden so that I could provide myself subjects for my photography. If you're not sure where to start, maybe get some gardening magazines. New Zealand Gardener is amazing i absolutely love that magazine because it has something for everyone in there there's a kids section there's a what to plant when there's a touring other people's garden section there's focus on plants what to what to plant now what to harvest now like pick now in terms of flowers it's so so useful and i've learned so much i pick up my copies at the op shop so they are inexpensive and i have a library of them and then each month i go through that month's issues and each time i learn something different even though i'm going through the same magazines a year later i might be into something different or i might have a new area of my garden that has different needs or whatever so i'm still always learning more and more things from the same magazines so i find those helpful i find them more helpful than books which can be a bit like heavy and intense and too much information almost so magazines are a great place to start if you're wanting to learn i can also recommend garden answer youtube channel she's amazing laura has the most beautiful garden everything looks amazing and she does tutorials and you can learn things there as well but really just just start actually this is another tip for lisa as well if you have a favorite flower or a favorite plant then start there so i love hydrangeas so then i'm going to focus on what can i learn about hydrangeas different varieties how big the plants are how to care for them where to situate them which kind of soil do they like so that's that's a way of starting it's just to pick one plant and then figure out what is the best position for that plant semi-shade okay where in my garden is semi-shade that can handle a plant of that size put it in there that's somewhere to start and then if that does well pop a few more into your garden otherwise just get yourself a pot and start with a pot think i'm going to grow some carrots in this pot or i'm going to grow some poppies in this pot or whatever you're wanting to start with whatever is your favorite whatever you enjoy eating or looking at just pick that and just pick that pot and that is a small and simple way of starting you can also learn how a plant responds to different light and different wind and different positions because you can move that pot around and that's just that's another way of learning is to do it in pots in your garden but in pots as you're learning and then you can always plant things out into your garden or try something different you don't have to start things from seed either. I do things that way because it's cheaper, but you can go to the garden center and buy some flowers, for example. So if you're walking around and something catches your eye and you're like, that's gorgeous, that speaks to me, that makes my heart happy. Oh wow, they are a type of marigold. Then go and learn about marigolds. They're annuals, they only get so tall, they like sun, they attract these insects, whatever, and then see where in your garden would suit at marigolds and then put them there or put them in a pot and just start with one thing learn about that one thing and then spread on from there 
Mandy has a few questions. So first she asked, once you have repotted seedlings, how does one know when they are ready to be planted out into the beds? So I start my seeds, generally I start my seeds early enough that my plants are gonna be nice and sturdy by the time the weather's warm enough for me to plant them out into the garden. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes they are ready before the weather is and sometimes they are still tiny when it gets warm enough. So if you kind of look on the seed packet it tells you how many days to germination and you know when the plant's going to start flowering you can get an idea of when to start the seeds so once i've pricked out my seeds into the pots they're just going to be tiny then i just keep watering them and watching them until like i said the soil and the air is warm enough to plant them out then you want to harden them off and this means you take them outside for a few hours in the day and then you put them back in your greenhouse or in your house in the evening and tuck them into bed and you do this increasing the number of hours during the day so they get used to the wind they get used to the sun they get used to whatever else is going on out there and eventually they're out all day you might have to tuck them back into your greenhouse at night and then eventually when they've been out day and night you can plant them out I don't do this, I'm a super casual gardener and I don't have time to be lugging 1500 seedlings in and out of the greenhouse multiple times. So what I do is I have two doors on my greenhouse, which may I add is not like a glass house. It doesn't get as hot in there, it's not sealed, even when both doors are shut, there's gaps, the wind comes through and it doesn't get like super, it's not as protected as a, as a glass house. So what I do when it's time to harden them off, like now, I just open both greenhouse doors. The wind goes through there, bugs fly through there, it's not as warm and that kind of toughens them up a little bit. And if they can't handle being planted out after that, then too bad. But I've never really had a problem. I stick them in my garden. Sometimes they sulk a little bit, but they usually flourish. I mean, we have such beautiful weather here in the summer and in late spring and the soil is amazing. So really, they just tend to take off. So I don't know if that really answers your question. How do you know they're ready? Like I said, sometimes they're ready before the weather's ready. And the way you know is they're getting quite big in relation to the little cell of the punnet and their roots start to get wrapped. So you can actually, if they dry, then if you haven't like freshly watered, you can actually pull that whole plug out and you'll see how tangled the roots are. If they are very, very tangled together and it's mainly white, you're seeing a lot of root, that is overdue to be planted out. If you're pulling them up and there's barely any root and there's just loose soil, they haven't really grown enough in the punnet to be ready to be planted out. A good rule of thumb is if you lift them up and you see roots poking out the bottom, it's time to plant them out. Okay, Mandy also asked, I seem to kill my seedlings either by underwatering or overwatering. I need help. Can you talk us through watering? I'm not the best at watering. I, I kind of stress my plants a little bit, but what I've learned from my gardening magazines is that's actually quite a good thing. If you don't stress them too much, a little bit of stress for plants makes stronger plants. So I will go out once a day and I'll check, it, does anybody look dry? And if it looks dry, I'll give them a good soaking with the hose. Underwatering is quite common because you'll, you'll water from above and you'll soak and soak and you'll think, oh, that's done. Oh, it's pouring out the bottom, it's done. But really, if you go and plant those seedlings out and you pull the plug out, only the top half of the plug is actually saturated. So it's great if you can sit your punnets into trays of water and they can suck the water up from the bottom. That will also make a deeper root system. But if you are watering from the top and you're giving them a good soak, give them a good soak. And then once you finish watering everything, maybe in half an hour, go back and soak them again. So it really saturates the soil in the cell but don't be doing that multiple times a day. Don't even do that every day if they don't look dry. If they're starting to wilt, you're stressing your plants, give them a good drink, give them a really good drink. Um, some plants, if they have wilted too far, will obviously die, but you want to avoid them wilting too much. I don't really water my seed trays very much. I'll give them a bit of a misting when I first sow the seeds and then when the seedlings are coming up, I might miss them again but that is when they're most susceptible to damping off and fungal diseases and getting too damp so go easy on the watering when there are tiny seedlings before you've pricked them out what you could do if you have let's say three trays of flowers is water them differently and then see which one suits that flower like do a bit of an experiment think i'm going to water that one every other day i'm going to water that one every day and i'm going to water that one once every four days 
and then see which one thrives and then that's that's what's right for that plant watering in the garden i'm not great at that we do have a sprinkler like a rotating sprinkler that we can turn on for the vegetable garden and sometimes we do that in the summer when there's no rain but that's kind of tricky because a it's in front of the window of the guest house so i don't want to be like parading around there and for the guests not to feel like they have any privacy and b it will affect the water pressure like we can say okay i'm going to water the garden for the next hour and a half so we're not going to have a shower like i'm not planning on having a shower or running water for anything else but i don't know when my guests are going to require water and i don't want to take all the water pressure when they're wanting to have a shower so if we have guests in the guest house we kind of hit and miss with our watering in the evenings i'll go out with a hose and i'll kind of water the gardens around the driveway i'll definitely water my pots every single day but generally i just kind of let nature take its course okay she also asked best time day and weather wise to plant seedlings out into the beds for the best possible outcome i don't know if time of day makes a difference but overcast weather definitely helps and if there's rain coming in the next few days that's awesome because that's going to water your seedlings in for you or water your plants in for you you don't want to be going out mid-morning on a bright hot dry sunny day and then planting out your plants they're going to get stressed and you're just going to spend more time watering them in so aim for an overcast day if you have one <laughs> and if there's rain coming up that's perfect if you don't have a choice and there's just a streak of sunny weather then maybe late afternoon when it's cooler plant them out then clever simple chic asked how do you feed your plants i don't I, t I should but i don't i actually want to look more into that um i'm trying to find out like how do you feed your plants i've got all purpose like fertilizer i'm like do i just strew that about in the beds and hope it gets rained into the soil i don't know if i'm planting a new shrub or a new plant i'm going to put a bit of all the all-purpose granular fertilizer in and then pop the plant in but generally i I haven't been feeding my plants and the soil here is so rich and amazing I've been getting away with it but I think I'm going to have to start especially with my raised beds it's kind of more tricky feeding the vegetables because I don't want to just use anything on them I want to fertilize organically so I want to get some sheep pellets and compost and things like that and dig that into my beds but so far I haven't fed my plants and they've been doing well she also asked do you do organic gardening yes and no with my vegetables yes but then also around the raised beds i'll scatter slug bait which is not organic so i guess that probably gets into the water at least into the groundwater at some point um, so i'm not like fully organic in the actual beds yes i'll use organic fertilizers or i'm not going to be spraying for pests things like that but then we do use like weed killer in other areas on our property and i will use non-organic fertilizer for my shrubs and other plants that aren't food so kind of she also asked what do you do for pest control like insects i don't do anything <laughs> like i said i'm a casual gardener if things do well in my garden great they get to stay if they don't then they don't i'm not going to be like oh this plant's suffering so i'm now going to get this and that and i'm going to put this product on it and i'm going to like i don't pamper my plants Pest control, I let nature take its course. If you get one type of bug, that often prompts a response that you're going to get a predator of that bug into your garden. If not this year, then the following year. I haven't really had a problem with pests. I had earwigs all over my um, cabbages and like broccoli flower last year. So I went and looked up, are earwigs good or bad? And although they can eat your dahlia flowers, which they didn't, they can be bad in that way they are actually beneficial in the garden so i just left them i don't know like i haven't really had a problem with pets but i think my approach is just to pick them off like slugs we've had slugs and i'll just kind of fling them over the fence into the road and i will put down like slug bait we have coddling moth in the apples and I have been reading up on what to do, how to prevent the coddling moth, how to treat it and I, I just can't be bothered. I'm busy and I don't have time to coddle the coddling moth. So we have coddling moth in our apples, some years worse than others. I'm probably the wrong person to ask about pest control, sorry. 
Nancy asked, what veggies do you find grow well and do you have a list of what to plant at what time of the year and how long it will take until you can harvest it? Tips for a beginner on starting a veggie garden. Sorry Nancy, I don't actually have a calendar that I can share with you. It depends on what area of the country or area of the world you're in. Some areas obviously have a longer growing season than others and different conditions. Some areas are dry in summer and some get a lot of rainfall. So all of those things are going to affect which vegetables do well for you. I've had success with pretty much all of the vegetables I've ever tried to grow, which is swede, beetroot, lettuce, leeks. Oh, maybe less so with leeks. They never really fattened up. I've grown tomatoes, beans, cabbages, cauliflower, broccoli, butternut, pumpkins. I'm busy growing garlic for the first time. I've grown bok choy cucumbers zucchini i mean zucchini is amazing and it seems to do well everywhere so that's always something good to try so my tip for a beginner starting a veggie garden is just start start in a pot you can even just buy a bag of potting soil slit it open and pop your vegetable seeds into there or your vegetable seedlings into there and they can grow in the bag just start i would suggest that you grow something you enjoy eating so don't think like um, I don't know a big purple cabbage looks so impressive in the garden, but I hate cabbage Don't do that or like radishes are really quick and rewarding I'm gonna sow lots of radishes, but I hate eating radishes don't do that So think about what you do enjoy eating and then try and plant that because it's just gonna be so much more rewarding When you get to eat it Maybe just pick one thing or two things to start with if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed See how they go learn as much as you can about them and then add later or you can do what I did and just plant all the things and then at least something will work out. Marina asked, can you get fuchsias in New Zealand? If so, are you not a fan of them? I love fuchsias. I think they are so beautiful and they can tolerate shade. I do have one tiny little fuchsia plant in my garden. But what I don't like about them, or the one I have anyway, is that it's deciduous, which means it completely disappears in the winter and then it starts fresh again the next year. And like I said, I'm very much wanting to put evergreen things into my garden that is one of the priorities of the plants that go into my garden is that they are evergreen. They don't have to look great all year, but I don't want them to completely disappear and there's just gaps and holes in the garden. So I love fuchsias, I enjoy them. I think there are some evergreen varieties, but I just haven't quite figured that out and found where to buy them and put any into my garden. Maybe I should do that this year because I think they are beautiful. And you can get all kinds of fuchsias here and there are some native fuchsias as well, which are tiny i'll insert a picture here of a native fuchsia they're very pretty so that is my gardening q a video i feel like it's going to be epically long i hope it was helpful thank you to everybody who submitted questions if you have any more gardening questions do leave them down below like i said i have filmed one before which i will leave in the end slate in case you haven't seen it before thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one